with Donald Berniard, who's uh, lovingly been called Biscuit since he was a young kid. Um, Biscuit, tell us a little bit about the last year, what you learned, the experience you gained by playing in games. You know, um, I got pulled up off the scout team early in the year. Um, I wasn't expecting it, so um, one thing I learned is you got to, on the fly, you just got to learn and adapt quickly. So that's one thing the COVID environment taught me. One thing, just getting pulled up off that scout team to the varsity mm -hmm. level, that's, that's one thing that taught me, is learn on the fly and adjust. It's rare that a freshman contributes in a position like nose guard. It's a type of position where you need to gain strength and weight. Usually at a Naval Academy in particular, the pleep summer kind of saps you of your strength and weight. Um, how, why, what do you account for being able to perform as a nose guard, an interior line position, which is such a rigorous position as a pleat? Um, I guess just, just hard days of work and um, in our scheme, just speed and agility, that's what Coach Newberry talks to me about is I don't need to be the biggest, the strongest guy to, um, to work in our scheme. So just that speed and agility and hard work and faith in God just really propelled me to that level at, a fresh, at freshman year. Well, I was going to ask you about that. I mean, we think of nose guards, we think of 300-pound guys, big, giant, immovable objects. Um, what did, did you know, kind of talk about what you bring to the table? And, and did you play this type of position or technique in high school, or were you in a 4-3 or what? Um, in high school, I actually did play nose guard. And, um, we played it in a 3-2-6, so it was something similar. Like, we didn't move around in high school this much, but I think I, I like this game better because it gives, gives me more freedom to be loose, um, get loose, just move around, just do a whole lot of things. So I think I appreciate this game a whole lot better than, than a head up zero, zero tech. When I just watching you in practice just now during a scrimmage situation, I saw you dodging a, a offensive lineman. So instead of taking them on head up and trying to win a strength battle, you use your quickness and speed to, to basically make a miss, right? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I mean, like as you said, I'm not, I'm not the biggest. I'm not 6'3", 300, so I got to use to what's my advantage is my quickness. Um, I would say I'm technically sound at a good level. I still have a long way to go. So I just think I have a whole lot of things to work on. But I use those advantages, my, my size, my quickness to my advantage. So what did you want to work on going into this season? When you look back at the tape from last season and talk to Coach Hall, I'm no doubt gave you a breakdown and said, here's what you need to improve upon. What were some of the things that you need to, to add to your game? Um, two things I, I really think I need to work on is my um, consistency. Like. First and foremost, I have to get in, I would say I'm in shape, but I have to get to that top tier level. We play teams like Notre Dame, Cincinnati, UCF, like they're, they're going hurry up sometimes and I have to just stay on that, stay on that elite level that I, that I hope I am on. And um, the other thing is pass rush. I gotta, I gotta get my sack, sack total up from what last year was. So, so those are two things I, I think I need to work on. What's what, and then talk about the room and the nose guards, because I mean, coaches talked a lot about Cromwell and that he's really come on strong and you know, Seiya has seen action before. He's got some experience, so it looks like you got some depth at the position. Oh yeah, we'll be we'll be solid this year. We just got me and Seiya. We we've been through the fire. Clay's come a long way. Just seeing him develop from spring to what he is right now, it's just been a, it's just been a, um, a good thing to watch. So, just I think we'll be solid at this position. And what do you say about Coach Hall? Is he mean to you guys and really hard on you? Is he? I mean. Is he, a, a, is he really a teddy bear underneath that fierce, fierce face? I wouldn't say he's a teddy bear, but uh, yeah, he's one of the best teachers I've been around. Like coming from high school to Naps to here, um, he's one of the best teachers I've been around. I learned so much more about the game than what I knew coming in here as a plebe. So um, he's a blessing to be around. One of the best teachers I've been around in my so life. The biscuit name came from your family. Are you, do you wish it hadn't transferred to Navy? How did everybody find out? And I mean, now you're known as Biscuit all throughout Navy. I don't know if you wanted to keep that along in college. I mean, it was kind of on my social medias. I met some guys before I, I went to NAVS. They've been calling me there since NAVS. Uh, my whole life has been, it's been my nickname. That's what everybody's been calling me. So it's tra it just translated to here when they heard, like my class started calling me that. It just was infectious and that's how everybody knows me now. All right, thanks a lot. One more just to follow up on that. We heard it in the spring. Um, it was an old thing, one of my dad's friends. Um, it came actually when I was born, it was like I was a little chubby, a little golden, like a little biscuit. And it's, it's something to do with a movie called Sea Biscuit. It's 2003. I don't even know where, it, where that came from. A horse racing movie, so I don't even know where that came from, but I know that texture and like how it came out. One of my dad's friends adopted that name to me. You like the nickname? I mean, yeah, I like it. It's unique.
All right, we're here with Clay Cromwell, nose guard for Navy. Uh, first and foremost, uh, do you want to have a cute nickname you'd like to tell us about? <laughs> no, sir. I can't say that I have one. Uh, <laughs> no, sir. Well, coaches uh, have told us that you've been coming on strong. Uh, Coach Newberry has mentioned your name a couple times, says he likes what he's seeing at you. What it, first of all, last year, were you on scout team last year? Yes, sir. I was a defensive end, actually. So how did you make the transformation? How did you go from scout um, team to the end to back up nose guard? That's an interesting question. So I went home from break. I, I, over the course of the year, I gained about 50 pounds. So really? uh, I, I, I'm around like 295. So that's why I made the move to the interior. And what about, you know, how did you make a jump talent-wise from being on scout team to being in the mix to, to play a lot? Um, I think all the credit can go to Coach Hall and uh, Biscuit, my teammates, for really coaching me up. It's a position I've never played before. And I'm getting some really you know, solid coaching and expertise from you know, the coaching staff and help from my teammates as well. And without them, uh, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I presume you're a D-end in high school? I actually played tight end. Tight end? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Um, so you're not only making a switch to defense, you're switching positions within the defense. Um, sure. What happened in the spring? You must have developed some confidence in yourself during the spring. Uh, this didn't just happen here in August camp. But you, it had to been the spring where you made a big move. Yes, sir. Uh, I think gaining confidence with the defense and really learning it, that's the first time I ever played nose. And again, putting in the extra hours with Coach All, him taking the time to work with me, break down the defense, show me what I need to do and you know the techniques I need to use. And then just playing with you know elite effort and just uh, I think all the credit again can go to my coaches for helping me get to that point. So uh, obviously, Coach Newberry has mentioned that you all are complementing each other well because you're different style nose guards. Like Donald said when we were speaking to him, is he uses his quickness and his you know footwork to try to beat offensive linemen. You're a little bit bigger, stronger guy. You can you know maybe if you're playing a a team that you know like Air Force is going to uh, you know, they've, they've got big centers. I mean, talk a little bit about being a little bit different than Donald. I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. He's a really shifty guy, really fast, uses speed to his advantage. And it's not that either of us are incapable of kind of playing with the other style, but I think we are suited better for our own ways, and especially playing against like traditional or option ball. Um, they all really have their advantages. Uh, and the types of styles we play with and really having that capability to just kind of like push the offense back and gain ground in the backfield. So obviously, I mean, you didn't play in any games last year. And this year comes along and you're still number two on the depth chart. You're going to be in games. You're going to be going against some massive offensive linemen. Do you feel like you can translate what you've been doing in the practice field to a game situation? Absolutely. All right, thanks a lot, buddy. Yes, sir. Hey, a few uh, additional questions. Switching from tight end to defense, what do you like about defense being on this side of the ball? Um, the aggressiveness, my ability to kind of play uh, with reckless abandon and hit people, really. You uh, mentioned earlier you added on 50 pounds. Oh, How sure. was that? I mean, it's hard to keep on the weight. Um, uh -oh. You enjoyed it? Yes, sir. It's fine. I think it was pretty much all kind of natural. I didn't try to gorge myself or anything. Lifting weights, Coach Fitz, credit to him again, doing a great job with the strength and conditioning. And, you know, I guess I'm just hungry a lot, so. You feel more powerful now out there? Or what are some of the changes you've noticed? Absolutely, being able to push guys back, you know, like 300 pound centers and guards coming down, you're getting double teamed. I think it really makes a difference in the strength and power that I've gained. Well, Coach Jarek Hall works with the nose guards and the defensive tackles. Let's talk about these nose guards first. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's interesting. The two guys I just interviewed here mm -hmm. today, it, in August of last year, they weren't even really on the radar, right. either of them. Right. Well, both were on the scout team. Uh, Biscuit showed some things and got pulled up. And then oh. Cromwell, obviously, was a DN who grew into being a nose guard. How, mm -hmm. how odd is it for you to be have your top two guys on your depth chart or guys that weren't even really in the picture right. at this time last year? No, I mean, I, I, I've, I've been there before, you know, as a coach at the different stops. Um, where I've been, you know, cause, and when it comes down to it, you know, it's, it's all about the development, you know, and it's a process, you know, and it's a, it was a process with those two, and, and it, it starts uh, it starts in the weight room. Uh, Coach Fitz done a really good job with them uh, physically, um, getting them ready to play, you know, in the trenches, and and then uh, when they when they come out, you know, for fall practice, you know, now it's time to to go through individual, you know, it's time to hit the sled, it's time to go into the shoots, you know, it's time to do the hard things, you know. Uh, being a defensive a defensive lineman, you know, and then at the end of the day, you take it, you take it to the scrimmage snaps, you know, and then you see you see what you've been doing an individual, you see that correlate to the scrimmage snaps, and, and that's when you see a guy developing, 
you know, and, and that's what and that's what those two are doing. Um, so biscuit. Uh... In terms of, I mean, last year, both you and Coach Newberry were complimentary of what he provided. I mean, it was kind mm -hmm. of a real pleasant surprise. It kind of came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. But I would imagine, based off the experience he got, having a full spring ball, we have mm -hmm. not seen the best of, of Donald Bernier. No, like, like I said, he, he was he was 253 pounds when he played versus um, the Black Knights um, down in last December. And, and now he's up to 270 now. You know, mm -hmm. that's a 17-pound increase. So and, and, and without it, losing the quicks, right? And not, he's quicker than he was a year ago. Really? In my opinion, he, he's quicker than he was a year ago. He, he's uh, you know, he's he's playing hard, you know, and uh, and, and, it's, and it's starting to pay off. You know, you know, when when a guy gains that much weight, you know, it's going to take time, you know, for uh, for him to really, you know, uh, acclimate to it. You know, and he's doing that here in, in, in camp, and he's having a good camp. And and I, in my opinion, I, I think he's quicker than he was a year ago. And as I was watching and during the scrimmage situation here toward the end of practice, there was a play and the center came out to block him or, and he just kind of sidestepped and uh, he, he can do that. His footwork mm. and quickness, he, mm. he doesn't have to take on 300-pound offensive linemen all the time. He can beat them with his, his athletic ability. Right, right. He can. He has, he has a luxury of being able to do that at times. But he also know there's a coming time when you got you have to square up and you're going to have to, take you know, that block yeah, you got to take that block on. You have to use your hands. The guy you. Exactly, exactly. You know, and he, uh, he he's, he's working on that. You know, there, there's nobody perfect at doing that right now. That's why we're we practicing out here every day, trying to get better, using our hands, coming out with a flat back, you know, and doing all those things. Because you know, when you when you're playing in the trenches now, footwork to me, footwork and hands is everything. Mm -hmm. Footwork, hands, and pan level. Uh, is, is everything, and, and that's what and that's what the guys really they t try to take pride on every day coming out here here to practice. So uh, Cromwell, mm -hmm. I mean the guy's a scout team D end. All of a sudden, spring ball, he's showing up. What what did he do to put himself in the picture at Nose Club? But it, it it goes back it goes back to the summer, and it goes back to Coach Fitz. Um, you know, working with him. I, I mean, he since he came in as a plebe to now, I want to say he's uh, I mean he's up about 50 pounds. You know, and, and he can run with it. You know, when, whenever you have that type of combination, you know, uh, in, in developing a guy, you know, he has the tools. Mm -hmm. You know, now it, it's going to be up to him to be able to to, to 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 flourish those tools and bring them out. You know, and it's my job to help him get to where we want to go. You know, but uh, but I'm really excited about him and, and what he's done thus far. Um, he, he has a he has a ways to go. You know, like like we all do, um, but but he's working every day to come out here and get better at his craft. And what does Clay bring to the table, in your opinion? He brings size. Mm -hmm. he, he brings size. A little bit different. Yeah, right? a little bit different. He, he, brings, he brings size, you know, and, and, and a guy who can run, you know, with that size, you know. And say as a guy that's played some snaps in games for this team, um, where is he? I mean, I, you know, we're talking about two guys. I mean, you've got some depth. I mean, when you mm -hmm. got a guy third on the depth chart at present who's played in real games, mm -hmm. uh, that's good. Yeah, no, no doubt. And CO is right there. Um, I tell you, he, he, he's sharper. He, he's sharper than ever. Ever has great attitude. Um, his mentality is awesome when he comes out uh, to meetings. You know, he's asking questions. He's staying after. Uh, he's doing the, the little things. Get himself ready to go out there and play football. Um, so I'm also excited. You know, excited about CEO being able to uh, to bring that quality depth. You know, uh, defensive line. You know, the good, the best defensive lines. You know that I've been on, a part of. You know, has had quality depth. You know, and that's what we that's what we're working to do. So real quick while we got you here, let's talk about the tackles real quick. Mm -hmm. We had Jerry Warren on a Zoom conference call Leah last week. Mm -hmm. uh, he says he feels comfortable at the tackle position. Um, can you talk how Jarris is coming along? Oh man, he he he's been uh he he's been something special here, you know, during this camp. You know, as a as a senior, um, he's taking he's taking the guys on his shoulders, you know, to kind of show them the way, you know, uh, from the meeting rooms. Uh, to to uh, the group chats, um, to the get-togethers that we have together, he's taken it upon himself um, to be the leader, and, and they they look they look at him as a leader, you know. And when you, when you watch the tape, you know I'm able to uh, show the guys uh, what Jay is doing 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 right, you know. And I'm showing the guys this is how I want it done, you know. Um, haven't had that luxury, you know, um, from the defensive tackle position, you know, on a consistent basis, you know. And that's what we're getting with that's what we're getting with Jay. I'm excited about him. And DeAndre Williams is a guy. Mm -hmm. This is his last chance to make a mark. I mean, he's mm -hmm. a guy that looks the part. He's got mm -hmm. nice size, but mm -hmm. he's never been able to really find a, you know, a, a steady role, a consistent mm -hmm. role with his team. Is he ready mm -hmm. to make an impact? I, I, I think so. I, I think so. You know, we sit in the meeting room. You know, it's him and Jay. You know, they up front. 
you know, um, and, and the guys look, look to him as a leader as well. He's done a great job over the offseason, you know, with his body. Um, he's bigger than he's bigger and he's stronger. He's sturdy, he's stout. Um, you know, everybody has a role to play, you know, on the team. You know, and it's all a part of building that quality depth, you know, and uh, he's a part of that, you know, and I'm excited where he is mentally. Um, you know, he, he, he's a blue collar guy. You know, he'll tell you, he's just a blue collar guy who just will bring his lunchbox every day and ready to work. All right, thank you, Coach Hall. No, no problem. Uh, just one additional yeah. question. Uh, Clay's obviously not the first player that's uh, started in high school on offense and then transitioned to defense in college. Uh, what is it that you like about these guys transitioning from offense to now defense? Uh, it's, it, you know, it's, the, well, let me find the right word. When you got a guy, so Clay was a, was a tight end, right? And when you come over to play defensive line, you know, you, you've become more athletic, you know, and, and that's what, and that's what Clay brings, you know. Um, it's just like a, uh, if you had a, um, some teams use high school running backs, put weight on them and put them down at nose guard, you know, now you got an athletic nose guard in there, you know, so, uh, you know, that, that's, the, that's the good part of, of bringing an offensive player on, on the defensive side of the ball, particularly on the defensive line, uh, is, is the athleticism.